What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here, and today we're talking cinema cameras, and specifically the Canon C200. Welcome back. First things first, if you notice some weird red marks on my hand, that's because I feel like I almost broke it today. I fell off my one wheel going top speed and uh, it's uh, it sucked, needless to say. But we're here to talk about cameras, not my injuries, so let's get into it. So a few months ago, Canon actually gave me the pre-production model. It's one of the first ever C200s in the world. The serial number actually read like 00001, which was super cool to have and to just know that I was driving around. Just wanted to roll my window down and be like, hey, what's up? First C200, it's in my trunk right now. Have a great day. So I was super thrilled to be able to get to play with it essentially before anybody. So Maddie and myself, you guys know Maddie from Travel Fields. C200? Yeah. <laughs> We actually grabbed that pre-production camera and we met up with this dude named Matt Guthmiller and Matt's a pilot and he held the world record for the youngest kid to fly around the world solo. And why I say kids, cause he's like 18 years old. which just absolutely blew my mind. So Maddie and I grabbed the C200. He didn't even know I had it. I surprised him with it. And we got in this tiny little plane over at the Toronto Island airport and we flew north to just quickly tell the story of Matt and how he came to get a plane and fly around the world and set this record at such a young age. Hey Matt, do you think you got enough shots yet? No, never. So small, plenty of room in here. That's not half bad at all. All right, man, don't kill us. Thank you, it's appreciated. This here camera is way too big for the cockpit of that plane. Just saying. Mosquitoes the mozzies are coming out in uh, full force, so we need to get back to the car to get back to the plane to get back to the city to get back to his car to get back to my truck to get back home. That made perfect sense if you think about it because that's how I got here. We are the last people here like All right, get us home, bro. I'm going to try. One minute to spare. Woo -hoo. That's not cutting it close at all. So we were able to test how this camera worked in small spaces or in bright direct sunlight. We're shooting at sunset. We shot in the new raw light. We had microphones plugged into it. We put it through its paces in like 24 hours like nobody would. And I'm super excited with the film that we created from this fun little day up north. Now before I get into that and show you that film, I wanna talk a little bit about what this camera is, who it's for, why it's priced at what it is, and what makes it so special, and why these cameras cost what they cost. Because I think a lot of the times, especially for me, when I was learning about this, I would think to myself, how is a camera 10 grand and why do I care that a camera is 10 grand? I'm never, never going to pay that for a camera. So what does it matter? But there's still a lot to be learned about why cameras cost that much because those specs actually affect video and cinematography and the whole world of production as a whole. So it's important that you still know them. So I think this video will help you both understand what cinema cameras are, why they're expensive, who they're for, when they're best used, and we'll talk a little bit about the fun features that this new C200 has that uh, I'm pretty amped about. So I think what has everyone mostly excited about this C200 
is the fact that it shoots raw. Now that's a big deal for a camera to shoot raw. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, what does that mean? Just like your photo camera would shoot raw photos and you can bring them into Lightroom and still change the white balance and all of those values before you actually save it without losing any quality, shooting raw video is exactly the same. And that usually comes with a very hefty price tag. That's why people love shooting with stuff like RED cameras and so on and so forth because they shoot raw video. So now Canon's introduced a new codec which is called Raw Light. So there's tons of information packed into this codec, which is raw, it's 4K, and it's 10 or 12 bit, depending on the frame rate you use to shoot with. So raw light will do 10 bit at 60 frames a second, and it'll do 12 bit at 24 frames a second, etc. So the amount of information that is being packed into this codec that the camera is actually pulling when you're shooting raw is substantial. So we shot this whole thing with Matt way up north raw, and you'd get only about I don't know, 16 minutes of footage out of a 128 gig card when you're shooting raw. The file sizes are huge. That is one downside. The other downside is it's a, it takes a toll on your computer to actually be able to edit it. And at the time that we used it, there wasn't even anything that recognized these files. Canon were able to provide us with software that read this, no problem. But as it stands right now, editing softwares and suites, they're all still playing catch up so that raw light can be, you know, editable within Final Cut, Premiere, that kind of thing. So when a new camera comes out, that's pretty much standard. Several months from now, that'll, that won't be an issue, but having the pre-production one, we actually had to color correct and edit a lot of this footage uh, within DaVinci Resolve. Needless to say, we were very impressed with the raw light codec. So the C200 actually has, when you're shooting in raw light, up to 15 stops of dynamic range. And as we've talked before in past videos, I'll link them here, you guys know that the more dynamic range you have, the more cinematic stuff looks because that camera is able to balance the highlights and the shadows more evenly. So having 15 stops of dynamic range whilst shooting in raw light is incredible, which is going to make your stuff look so good. If you're shooting in log formats, which this camera has, it shoots in normal C-log and it shoots in C-log 3, you're gonna get up to 13 stops when you're shooting in MP4, not raw light, which is still absolutely incredible. And I was hanging out by the lake a little earlier this evening, just specifically filming things with highlights and shadows. I wasn't trying to get epic B-roll, I was just trying to do more like test shots so that you guys could see how this camera handles things like a sky at sunset or reflections on the water or shadows from trees and leaves, that kind of thing. So you get a good idea of the detail that this camera can retain in shooting with those 13 stops of dynamic range with both MP4 and shooting raw light. If you threw a DSLR into the mix at this exact setting, that sky would be completely white at this point. You could put an ND filter on it, but then you'd get some vignetting on the edges and you're still kind of give and take and you gotta choose the sky or the foreground. The other thing that I love so much about these EOS cinema cameras is the built-in ND filters. Now these have up to eight stops of built-in NDs, so you don't actually have to screw anything on. You don't have to go buy extra ND filters for different lenses and step down rings and worry about bringing all that with you. They're built into the camera so they just slide in front of the sensor like sunglasses. So if stops of ND, whoop, you hit that button, boom, it comes in, hit it again, doosh, woof, woof. it just keeps going, which is so handy for the fact that you guys know I get a lot of vignetting when I shoot wide and I use an ND filter, but with the C200, I get nothing because that's going straight in front of the sensor and it's built into the camera, which is definitely one of my favorite things about this camera as a whole. So when you buy a cinema camera, it actually has way more features on it that proper video cameras have. So I shoot with the 1DX Mark II, which is a DSLR. So first and foremost, that camera's built for sports shooters. It's not necessarily meant or designed to be a workhorse of a cinematographer's camera by any means. That's why it has so many shortcomings when it comes to audio and ND filters and codecs and that kind of thing. This camera picks up where that leaves off completely. The camera has two XLR ports so I can just cable that mic straight into the body and then my audio is recorded into the video clip. I don't have to record separately on my Zoom or a field recorder of any sorts and then sync it later in post. It's completely done for me. Like if you look, if I zoom out here, there we go. There's my mic. So this mic right here, this is a boom mic. It's going straight into the C200, which means when I drop that file within Premiere, everything's there. I don't have to go find the audio. And that's actually a massive, massive help fix this. There's nothing wrong with recording audio off camera, but fun little fact is I actually did this entire video two months ago. 
I recorded everything, I already did this whole section, but I forgot to dump the audio card. Bunch of tutorials came and went, I formatted that card many times, and then when I actually went to edit the C200 tutorial and review, I realized I forgot to actually transfer the audio files off the card from my H4n. So, for that very reason, being able to record good quality audio straight into the C200 itself, that's a huge plus for me. Being able to control the levels and control the output and different settings within that audio file itself is is awesome. It's super, super handy, and it helps with that workflow big time. This camera takes SD cards, it takes CFast cards. If you're gonna be recording in raw light, you have to have a CFast card. It won't do it on the SD. CFast are just faster at reading the data, and they're the ones that you need to keep up with raw light. SD cards will film normal stuff. So right now, this talking head thing, I'm shooting that on the C200 using an SD card, that's fine. Battery life on these cameras is great. It ships with a smaller battery, but you can also buy a massive battery. Look at this thing, whoo! It does 120, but it does it in 1080p, which is the same as what my 1DX does. So it's nice to have it because it's still at least packed into this package. I don't have to bust out a separate camera to get that 120. And being able to have better dynamic range on the C200 and shooting 120 is just gonna make my slow motion stuff look even better. But it would have been just super epic sauce if that 120 was 4K, but it's 2017. We're not getting that kind of thing yet, but maybe one day, maybe a firmware update. Hint, Canon. So your average everyday person isn't gonna go buy a C200. It just doesn't make any sense. If you just wanna make some videos, have some fun, do a vlog here and there, yeah, absolutely not. But if you run a studio, if you run a production company, maybe you're already in the business and you're doing stuff like documentaries, work for nonprofits, you're making music videos and you're doing corporate gigs and stuff like that, this camera, is perfect for you. This is the kind of thing that's not quite like top, top tier, like we're talking like red weapon style, but still a massive contender in the world of the fact that it shoots raw and it has all the audio capabilities and it has a crazy codec and it does C-Log and great dynamic range. You can make some truly cinematic looking footage with this camera. When I was 18, I read this story about a guy from California who was 20, who was going to go set this record as the youngest person to fly sail around the world. And I just kind of thought, well, gee, I could do that. I think it's important that you guys know why the money is being spent versus just seeing a number. It's, it's you know, it's hard just seeing prices on like, you go to BH, whatever website you go, you walk into a camera shop and you see that, oh, wow, $9,000, like, no. And then they say like, why is that $9,000? And someone says, oh, it shoots raw, it's 12 bit, the regular codec's 10 bit. I mean, it takes CFast cars, it's got built-in NDs, 15 stops of dynamic range, and you say, well, that, that really, that really means nothing to me. I still don't understand why that's 10 grand. But then you compare it to the cameras that are available now or DSLRs and the capabilities those have, you start to understand why those cameras are priced the way they are, especially when there's footage to back it up. So if you do run a studio, having a camera like this sitting on the tripod that has everything plugged into it and lights and monitors and microphones, and it just it's able to just sit there and be your workhorse is an incredible advantage when you're someone like me who needs to sit down, have a system that I can record tutorials and stuff like this on, and then I can just pick up and go and grab my DSLRs and, and head out the door. But but if I wanted to do a more intense project like what we did up north with Matt and Maddie, Matt and Maddie, I can bring this off the tripod and we can really go at it and get an exceptional quality video. So I know I've been dropping little clips and stuff like that here and there. I've been talking about this film that Maddie and I made. If you guys want to see it, I linked it below in the description. Just click on that link. It'll open the website and you can watch it full screen. Check it out. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. It was super fun to make. Thanks to Maddie for helping out with it. And thanks to Matt for actually flying us up north and knowing how to fly a plane in the first place. Thanks to Canon as well for lending me that pre-production model. It was super cool to actually have like one of the, if not the first versions of a camera that they were developing. And then also having the very first C200 in Canada. That's absolutely incredible. So 
I'm super pumped. Uh, this is a great camera. You guys are gonna see way more of it. If you wanna know more about these types of cameras and you wanna see further reviews and more examples and more clips like that, uh, let me know below. I'd love to know your thoughts and we can we can chat, we can, we can get going on the comments. So that's it for me guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. A small little insight into the C200. Again, if you wanna check out that film, links below. Hit that like button if you like this video. Subscribe if you aren't already and, and, we're almost at a million. That's, oh, that's insane. It's gonna be a good day when that happens. Whew, I'm pumped. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.